Revelation chapter 12, we'll read verse 4, verse 4. So we understand that the seven-headed dragon ten, with ten horns is referring to Satan, but when we look at the specifics, it's the powers that he's given throughout all time in history. And we went from Nimrod all the way down to the Roman power Caesar, and then it's carried into modern forms with England, Russia, and America. So we've seen that. All right. Now let's talk about more, more of what happens with these two wonders in heaven. So remember, there's the woman with child, and then there's also the great red dragon. These are the two wonders at Revelation chapter 12, all right? Remember, there are two wonders in heaven. What are they? If you read Revelation 12, it's the dragon and then the woman with child. So we've discovered that the dragon we know to be Satan, and then in specifics, it would be referring to the ten powers and seven ancient kings throughout all time. Seven ancient kings and ten powers. Kings and kingdoms, and we've proven that in our last Bible study, so I'm not going to really expound on that one. And then the two weeks before, we've proven that this is referring to Israel, the woman, but we're going to expound the child a little more. So that's the question some people are wondering, who is the child? All right. And his tail, that's speaking of the great red dragon, drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So notice right here that this great red dragon, uh, he took a third of the stars that are in heaven with him. Notice, and did cast them to the earth, and they were fallen down from heaven to the earth. Now notice that who these third part of the stars are referring to are referring to the angels at verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his what? Angels. Look at verse 9, the last part of verse 9. Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Notice when the dragon is cast out from heaven to the earth, he's cast out with his angels. If you look at verse 4, the dragon drew what? The third part of the stars of heaven, and did what? Cast them to the earth. See, so these angels are, ref these stars are referring to the angels. And if you remember Revelation chapter 1, even the beginning of the book of Revelation showed you that these stars are angels. So throughout the Bible, consistently, again and again and again, we see throughout the Bible that the angels are in reference to the stars. We've seen that so many times throughout our Bibles. That's why in the book of Job, they were called the morning stars, right? So when the morning stars sang together, sons of God shouted for joy. So notice that the angels, they're assimilated with the stars. We also saw Revelation chapter 9. I don't know if you recall that when the angel was coming down from heaven to the earth, that he was coming down like a star. He was coming down like a star. So a lot of times throughout the Bible, angels are assimilated with stars. So notice this is a third part of them, though, a third part of the stars in heaven. So, you've probably heard of this term before. The term is, a long time ago, when Satan rebelled against God, he had a third of the angels join him on his side, and then they tried to do a rebellion against God, and God kicked them out of heaven. But actually, that did not happen in the book of Genesis. That never occurred in the book of Genesis, and that's a traditional teaching you'll hear in churches. Because where do you see this part about a third of the angels cast down from heaven to the earth? Revelation. That's opposite from Genesis. Genesis is book of beginnings. Revelation is the end. So what happened at Genesis? Genesis, what we do know is this, is that if you look at Matthew, let's look at two places, Isaiah 14 and Matthew 25. Isaiah 14 and Matthew 25. Okay, so let's see what happened when Lucifer rebelled against God. So here's the thing. There is no doubt. There is some truth in here. 
The truth is, is that Lucifer, <coughs> so Satan the dragon here, he had angels who joined his side, and then it looked like that all of them were cast out, that they were cast out of heaven. And so they no longer have access to God's heaven. But you also got to realize this. They had no access to all of God's creation that time. So that is the teaching which you may have heard about the Genesis gap. So what God did was that he gave them no kingdom at all in heaven or on earth. They were all completely had no access whatsoever. He drowned it all out with the universal flood. However, what happened is that he gave the dominion to who? Mankind. That's why Satan was jealous. That's why he wanted mankind to fall. Why? So that he can reclaim his kingdom. But obviously, God's third heaven, his, uh, his kingdom, was not given dominion to mankind. Mankind's dominion was throughout all the universe over here, his creation. So we, the world, dry land, sea creatures, land animals, you know, first, second heaven, etc. This was man's domain, obviously, that God gave. The six days of creation, Genesis chapter 1. All that was given to mankind, but not his third heaven we see. So if Satan took over that part of the dominion of man, it makes so much sense that Satan and his angelic beings, that they have no access to the third heaven, but the rest of the heavens, they get dominion. That's why you hear a lot of things, you know, concerning about the conspiracies, about the elites who rule in this world, and UFOs who fly throughout the space over there. So that's why we hear about this stuff. Why? Because that's Satan's territory. Now notice right here that Satan's territory right here at the second heaven where the stars are located. He's going to lose this dominion. Okay? So remember the third heaven, he was kicked out. We all can agree with that one. We saw that. We know about that. This is where God lives. But the second heaven over here where the stars are located at, this is his domain. And then where we see the first heaven over here, this is his territory over here where we are on earth. So you see the skies and the birds flying. So notice over here that this is all of Satan's domain. What's going to happen to this dragon is that he lost dominion over here. We already know that, but pretty, right now, this is his whole territory, okay? This is his whole territory. But what's going to happen over here is he's going to lose the territory over here. Amen. And then all he's got left is down here. That's why the Antichrist reign is very important to Satan on this earth. Why? Because he's going to get kicked out of there and start over here. He's literally, literally, literally going to be right here on this earth with the humans where the Antichrist and false prophet is because he's going to lose his territory at the book of Revelation, a third of them. Okay, now that I explained the whole story, let's see how this worked at the beginning, okay, how this rebellion worked. There were no numbers given. All we know, like mentioned before, when Lucifer rebelled against God, him and his angelic beings, how many in number, we don't know, but he did take a portion where they were kicked out of all of God's creation. But remember, they reclaimed this territory when mankind fell. Okay? So let's look at this one by one. Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which disweaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. See, he's below the stars. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. See, he's below the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So notice right here, Satan did live on the earth. Notice this says throne, right, at verse 13. So he did have rulership on this earth before he rebelled. But during his rebellion, he was cut down. And then look at Matthew 25. So hell was created, right? If you look at the next verse of Isaiah 14, which I didn't read, it says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. So in his rebellion, God, what, created hell. So look, when God created hell, which is before Adam and Eve, when he created hell, notice it was not just for Satan, it was for his angels too. 
So that proves that there were angelic beings, we do agree, fallen angels that did side with Lucifer during his rebellion. But the exact number of a third of them, that did not come from anywhere in the Bible except Revelation. That's a future time period. Okay, so let's look at Matthew 25. All right, we're going to look at the, look at the last verses of Matthew 25. Uh, we're going to look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, curse into everlasting fire. That's hell, right? But when was it created? When was it prepared? Why was it prepared? Why did he even begin? Prepared for the who? Devil and his angels. So we can agree with that fact. But this a third in number didn't come from everywhere, anywhere. It came from Milton's Paradise Lost and then the Mormons teaching as well. So this is where it came from. But it's not in the Bible, a third in number. Okay, so we know this will happen at the book of Revelation. So notice that he draws a third of them to his side and then they start their rebellion against the Lord God Almighty. So how he accumulates this third of the angels, I'm not too sure, okay? We could probably, uh, it says right here in verse 4, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So whether that could be meaning uh, his army left over uh, during the tribulation time, it could be referring to his army left over. The reason why I say left over is because remember at uh, the pre-Adamic flood, the Lord was trying to drown out the whole universe. And then the book of Jude shows that there are currently, currently fallen angels in their territory in hell. They have their own territory in hell, which we call Tartarus. And I've taught you that in our previous Revelation studies. So they have their own location. So it could be that, that's why I say whatever his army is left over. The reason why I say left over is because the remaining part of his armies were probably in Tartarus, see? So it could be referring to that, number one. Uh, number two, his tail during the third part of the stars of heaven could be meaning that he's trying to find more numbers again. And that is very possible. You might say, why? Because in Revelation 20, Satan lost his whole army. And in Revelation 20, when he comes out of the bottomless pit, he's trying to accumulate a new army. So he goes throughout the whole world and tries to deceive people and get them to his side. So meaning that means if Satan does that at Revelation 20, this could be referring to that the fallen angels, uh, that the angels up there, he could be trying to deceive them again and try to accumulate them to his side. That's very possible. You might say, really, is that possible? Yeah, because you know who you're dealing with? You're dealing with the greatest deceiver throughout all time in history. Throughout all time in history. I mean, some of you are wondering, how can people be so blind and deceived no matter how convincing my argument is? Not only that, how can people still be so deceived despite of God the Holy Spirit, God in His own power trying to convict them? You know why? Because that's how strong the deception is. See, you don't want to mess with the devil. A lot of people, they say that, I'm not afraid of the devil, I can bind him. My friend, yeah. good night, nurse. Yeah. Don't mess with fire. Yeah. Don't play with fire. That's uh, some of the people who tries to expose the satanic government and secret societies. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I thank God, and you see me doing that too. But good night, nurse, if they don't have that amount of healthy fear, like, hey, you got to be careful which areas to cover and how you can attack it wisely and successfully. Otherwise, once you get their attention, they're going to make your ministry no more. And you hear a lot of these people who try to expose government secrets and you don't see, hear their names anymore. You know why? Because they did get the devil society's attention. And look, they're in charge of the powers of this earth. You don't have that power. They can shut off your free speech right now, which is already on the way. I mean, Alex Jones was like a big-time popular name a couple of years ago, but that name is really dying down now. You know why? All it takes is, once you get the attention of Sat Satan's government systems, all the, it's, you think it's hard for them? No, they just have to shut down every social network out there. And given enough time, people will soon forget you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. See? How did our ministry continue and survive is you have to know that enemy. You have to know what he's capable and powerful of. And that's the reason why your pastor was able to maintain the ministry online. Still have a church here. Isn't that a miracle by God's grace? Amen, brother. Amen. Why? Because I, because I have to learn how the enemy plays. I have to know their rules. That way I could what? Uh, Jesus says, 
at the book of Luke, which a lot of people don't understand. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of what? Wolves. What do wolves do with sheep? They'll eat you. They don't leave you alone and say, oh, okay, it's fine. No, they'll eat you. So what did Jesus say? Be wise as what? Serpents. Satan is known as a what? Serpent. You know why? Crafty. Deceptive. So you know what I do? I play craftily too. What did Paul say? Uh, I caught you with what? Guile. I craftily did it. That's how you have to do it. See? You have to do that. So that's how this pastor survived. That's how our ministry survived. That's why even the government would still let us street preach, and we had so many police officers going right by us, and we street preached just only a couple blocks from their station. How do we get that freedom? That's a miracle. How can you preach like this without compromising the gospel? You know their mindset. I mean, I took some law school classes. I know what are the limitations, what to say, what not to say. So you got to be careful of that. And you can do things in a way without compromising the gospel, without compromising right doctrine. Amen, right. A lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. There is so much, I know they've taken away a lot of our freedom, but you'd be surprised how much freedom you still have yeah. that you can use for the Lord, but you're not using it. Yeah, right. See? Don't let them take away your full freedom. That's what a lot of people are doing. They're letting Satan's kingdom take away their full freedom, then they can't proclaim the gospel anymore. All right, so this is such a deceptive being. So that's another possibility. He could be accumulating a new army again. 